New reporting from the New York That's Times reveals yeah. that as a campaign uh, of terror by Russian forces against the people of Bucha, and the details are so graphic and horrific, survivors and investigators tell the Times as the Russian attack on Kyiv stalled, soldiers started taking revenge on civilians in Bucha. A sniper in a high rise fired at anybody who moved. Other soldiers tortured, raped, and executed civilians in basements or backyards. Reporters and photographers with The Times spent more than a week interviewing city officials and witnesses. The Times says the evidence suggests the Russians killed recklessly and sometimes sadistically, in part out of revenge. The Times reports unsuspecting civilians were carried out of the simplest of daily activities. A retired teacher was shot mid-morning on March 5th as she opened her front door on a small side street. Her body lay twisted half inside the door more than a month later, Willie. And that's just one of thousands of stories like it. In the east, the mayor of Mariupol says more than 10,000 civilians have been killed in the city since the Russian attack started six weeks ago. According to the Associated Press, he also warned the death toll could surpass 20,000. Describing the horrors his city is facing, he said corpses are, quote, carpeted through the streets. The mayor also accused Russian forces of deliberately blocking humanitarian convoys from entering the city in part to conceal the carnage from the outside world. He went on to say Russian forces are using mobile cremation equipment. Local officials say more than 100,000 civilians are trapped still in the seaside city and facing severe shortages of food, water, and medicine and without electricity. Joining us now, NBC News foreign correspondent Raf Sanchez in Lviv, Ukraine. Uh, well, back to Mariupol in just a moment. Uh, but let me ask you specifically, Raf, about this idea of Russia regrouping, of repositioning its forces and preparing something for the east of Ukraine that could look a lot like Mariupol, that could look like Bucha. Yeah, Willie, U.S. officials saying every day they are seeing more Russian tanks, more Russian armor, more Russian artillery, and more Russian troops heading east towards the Donbass region. The U.K. military intelligence saying to expect the fighting to escalate significantly there over the next two to three weeks. And a lot of those troops who previously were encircling Kyiv went north to Belarus. They resupplied, they regrouped, they rearmed, and they are now heading east towards the Donbass. Now, the Ukrainians have sent some of their best troops to that region. And they are saying, though, that this will be a very different fight to what we've seen so far. This may look more like the Second World War, large pitched battles with formations of tanks and artillery going up against each other. And that is a situation that may favor the Russians. It means they will be fighting a lot closer to their borders. Their supply lines will be a lot shorter than they have been previously. And the Ukrainians won't be able to carry out the kind of guerrilla warfare, the kind of hit and run tactics that they have used so successfully around Kyiv. So this will be a very, very difficult fight for the Ukrainian forces. But President Zelensky says it is one they can win as long as they get the weapons that they need from the U.S. and other Western nations. Will it? And we're already seeing columns of tanks miles long moving in that direction. We'll keep a close eye on that. Raf uh, Zelensky is condemning statements by a Russian separatist leader calling for the use of chemical weapons against Ukrainian troops in Mariupol. In his nightly address, President Zelensky said his government takes the threats very seriously. According to the New York Times, a Russian separatist leader said on Russian television that Moscow could bring in, quote, chemical forces to use in Mariupol to, quote, smoke out the moles, referring to Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, an ultra-nationalist part of Ukraine's National Guard, the Azov Regiment, is alleging a drone dropped what it calls a poisonous substance of unknown origin in Mariupol. NBC News has not been able to independently verify that claim. The Pentagon also says it cannot confirm the possible use of chemical weapons, adding it's closely monitoring those reports. In a statement, Press Secretary John Kirby writes, these reports, if true, are deeply concerning and reflective of concerns that we've had about Russia's potential to use a variety of riot controlling agents, including tear gas mixed with chemical agents in mm. Ukraine. Uh, Roth, obviously, everyone being very close with their language here. If there was chemical a weapon deployed in this war, that obviously changes everything. What more can you tell us about those reports? 
Yeah, Willie. So as you said, these claims are coming from the Azov Regiment. They are the far right group that is leading the defense of Mariupol. And they say late last night, several of their soldiers were hit with what they say are chemical weapons dropped by a Russian drone. Now, as you said, we have not independently verified that claim. And earlier this morning, the Ukrainian deputy defense minister said she was not able to verify it earlier. She said initial information indicates these may have been phosphorus munitions. Now, phosphorus is a very ugly weapon. It drops burning white material over a very large area. But it's not typically what we mean when we say chemical weapons. Now, the British Foreign Secretary has said that if the Russians are indeed using chemical weapons, that would be a callous escalation. And it's one that Moscow needs to pay a price for. That is something that is easy to see. You'll remember President Obama drawing that figurative red line about chemical weapons use in Syria, telling the Syrian regime that if they use chemical weapons, it could trigger American military response. They did use chemical weapons. There was no American military response. President Biden, Secretary of State Blinken were both in the Obama administration at the time. They will be very wary of drawing any red lines that they don't plan to enforce. The White House has said that if the Russians do use chemical weapons, there would be a proportionate response. They haven't given any details, though, on what that means. Willie? Again, NBC has not confirmed that report, but it would cross a line, as you say, Raf. Raf Sanchez in Lviv for us this morning. Raf, thanks so much. John. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.